Kalyan Rama, thank you so much for having this conversation with us at Business Television India. Um, it's My pleasure. And, and it is wonderful to actually be here doing this. Uh, we've, of course, seen the kind of uh, numbers that have been coming out of the company. Um, just to start with some of the figures that we've seen, we did see 73.6 uh, market share overall when it comes to rail traffic presence at the moment. Yeah. And you are consciously uh, and vocally trying to improve that as well. What are your targets and what are some key factors that you are going to be pushing in to ensure those? You see, in Exim, we are already having a market share of around 74, 75%. Out of our total business, if you see, we got two segments. One is Exim segment, That's right. and one is the domestic segment, where we carry the goods in containers from one place in India to the other place in India. This domestic is around 20% of our entire traffic. So domestic, we are still at a little lower level. We are having only 66% market share. Mm. But because it's only 20%, that's not dragging us too much down. Yeah. We are at 73.6 overall. So our focus is to improve in the domestic segment to 75 level okay. and in Exim to reach 80. These are our targets. So overall we may be something touching 80. Okay. So my target and my team's target is 80 percent of the market share. And what sort of timelines are you envisioning for that sort of growth? Yeah, it must be next three years. Okay. We are working on that. All right. You have been talking about how your company is very focused on improving your volume growth at this stage. Um, can we expect some kind of a double-digit uh, uh, CAGR, as we were talking about just earlier, over the next three years? I mean, I think it's pushing the further point, uh, the first yeah. point that we were making here, right here. Definitely. You see, last year we talked of a volume growth of 11% and we achieved it, mm -hmm. almost there. And this year, again, the guidance is around 11 to 12%. We are going through that. In the first quarter, we achieved around 11.6% growth in our volumes, and uh, I'm sure overall year we will be able to do. And if I can do it for the next two years, so four years CAGR, we'll get around 12. Okay, but you know, exim volume growth, as we've been saying, has been uh, fantastic yeah. since the last four quarters. This is not a pessimistic question, but it's, it's, it's a practical question in terms of how one can sustain that and how long you think that kind of speed can continue in this matter. What are, what are, what are your thoughts on that? A very good question. A very <laughs> tough question. <laughs> you see, we started some initiatives last year. We were actually doing very well in 2014-15 in Conquer, and then we started sliding down because of some economic uh, reasons. Yes. There was some recession world over. So we were also slipping down. Then we took some corrective action in 16-17. And that started giving results. So mainly in this, two, three aspects we have taken up as okay. a very prime aspects. One is double stack running. Okay. So we were not doing much of that. But then we gave a very big push to double stack. And that's one. And second is service level. So now we are trying to give the service level assurances to the customers. We talk of something, we try to do that, and there is a belief in customers now, yes, Conquer can talk of service levels and they deliver. And then concentrating on pain points to increase the market share. Okay. Like in JNPT, today mm. I'm very proud to do, share with you, our market share is 84%. Mundra is catching up, but Mundra, yes, we got stiff competition. So there we are at 50%. Mm. Vipava also we were at 50 but then we started picking up that market share. Last year we touched even 64% in one quarter. So this year our target is to ramp up these two ports. Okay. Because if you see the exim volumes, 80% of the total volume is dealt in three of these four. Yeah. This JNPT, Mundra and Pipa. And that's what I was going to ask you in terms of proportion. How And, and you've mentioned that right yeah. now. You talked about pain points. Yeah, there are pain points. What are like pain points? See, there are operational pain points sure. mainly. The Indian Railways as a network has got a lot of constraints today. Mm. So that constraints Indian Railways is also working on to invest like around uh, 132 billion dollars in five years and in last three years they have already invested some 50 to 60 billion dollars. So we are waiting for those pain points to be removed. One pain point I can tell you is running over the ghats at JNPT. Mm. There are two ghats, mm. one going towards south and one coming into the central India. Both the ghats running is a problem. So it's a 
even though we mobilize our resources to do more at JNPT, but still there are problems. There are issues with the railways. We are working with the railways. Okay. And as this company is part of Minister of Railways and we are all grown, born and brought up in railway system, we understand those things yeah. very well. Yeah. So it's a very good coordination between Indian Railways and uh, Conquer. Hmm. We are working on how to remove these points. And so some other pain points uh, is like uh, the, the, the first mile and last mile activity, what we do. We are not strong on that. Okay. So we are very consciously working on that. I can expand you that hmm. whenever we come to the logistics part of yeah, it. Yeah. We are taking a lot of actions which are totally, uh, which not thought of in government sector earlier. And I'm going to get into that a little bit later in our yeah. conversation because I find uh, it very interesting that, you know, I mean, this is of course government, government, government. Yes. Uh, at the same time, you're being recognized for your innovation. Uh, and especially how you're standing out when it comes to this particular sector. But you're going to be competing with private players. So we'll get into the agility and how you're managing to do that in a bit. But I want to talk about the, pres uh, the pressure that we saw in realizations. Uh, and that was uh, in Q1. But you, of course, did, of course, increase your haulage charges back in May. Um, what kind of realization are you looking at after that hike, say, post Q2, Q4? I mean, what are you, how are you looking at this whole dynamic coming in? See, I gave a guidance yeah. that my PAT growth will be uh, at least 10 to 12 percent this yeah. year. And I am sure of that. Hmm. Like last year, if you see the year before financial results, we gave guidance of 12 percent on both top line and bottom line. But uh, bottom line, we achieved 24 percent growth. Hmm. Top line, 12 percent. Hmm. But bottom line, we doubled up. You see, that, I think that is what is required for any company. And uh, the investors are very happy to have this. this it's, it's so importance is the bottom line growth. Mm. So this year, the first quarter, yes, bottom line, there was some con some pressure on that. That's because the wages increased with the third pay revision we have given. Yes. The third PRC for PSUs. It's good. My employees are very much satisfied now. And I believe in employee strength is the company strength. Right. So the, the, the salaries increased by 60, 70 percent. So that's huge pressure on us. And there are some other costs increasing. We don't want to pass on the cost immediately to my customer because uh, we always believe in giving an efficient logistics at a very cost-effective solution. That's a, lot of, that, that's a lot of factors to be balancing in at this stage of your growth. Yeah, definitely. So the competition, road is the main competition. Uh, com my competition is not other, uh, other operators who are in this arena. Yeah. So that's we are not really concerned about it. Yes, we do keep an eye on that, but our main competition is from road. So if I do increase my cash, then hmm. it is very difficult to withstand the road competition. Because road has got certain advantages compared to the rail mode of operation. Hmm. We, are, we are predominantly a rail mode operator. 94% to 96% of my traffic moves by rail. Hmm. So I have to keep these things in mind before doing any price adjustments and not affecting the customer not affecting his business, so yeah. we have to give time. So we already made those changes. Hmm. In Q1, we adjusted almost all the increase in the cars. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, Q2, Q3, and Q4 definitely give us better returns. So you look, okay, so I guess one will sort of see how the, the, that, that dynamic yes. settles in. Yes. What is the latest uh, with the dedicated uh, fate corridor? What's happening there? What, you know, what, what can you sort of tell us a little bit about it? Because. Uh, in terms of the uh, DFCC that, that, that has been mentioned, what, what, what are the updates there? Yes, DFC is a little bit delayed, but the good news is that uh, very recently our minister has announced that yes. 169 kilometers of the, the section between Ateli and Fulera yeah. is going to be opened on August 15th. Hmm. So that's good once the beginning is made. I yeah. hope that the rest of the rings will follow. Okay. So recently there was some review about DFC and yes. the, the, uh, the targets today, what has been talked of, is March 20. We get the benefit out of DFC if one of the ports is connected. Hmm. So Palanpur is one junction station on the DFC. That they are talking of connecting by 2019, maybe mid of 2019 or March 2019. Once it is connected, then the two ports gets connected to that, Mundra and Pipa. Already yeah. the, the feeder routes are already 
available for running double stack trains. Mm. So once that comes, then DFC will start giving the benefits. So what are the advantages with DFC? That is very important we have to understand. Yeah, that's See, DFC, normally people thought that double stack will start running only the DFC comes. But what we is brought out and explained and in fact shown in practicality to the market is double stack we can run in the existing IR system as well. Okay. That is where I mentioned. Exactly. Double stack has given us a lot of push in our margins. It's like I was having a rail freight margin of 20 odd percent six, seven quarters before. Today we are talking of a rail freight margin of around 28 percent. So increasing 800 basis points is a very good job, mm. which my team has done. That's because of double stack. So we are able to utilize the existing section. But in larger stakes, there are two cardinal principles, which are like lungs and heart to the human body. These two are lung and heart of logistics. One is the continuous cargo visibility, and the other is the transit guarantee. Now, these two things, one is in completely our hand, the continuous cargo visibility. And I'm happy to share with you, we started giving this from 1st of March of this year. Yeah. So any cargo which is given to us, so for example, a import container has come mm. into India mm. at port, it is handed over to us for transport. Mm. Once we take over that, from that time onwards, till the cargo is delivered to the customer at the doorstep or in our ICD, he can track it 24 by 7 real time where the container is, whether it is in transport, whether it is inside the depot, under de-stuffing, whether it is moving out to his factory, he can do it. We are continuously tracking it. And the beauty of this tracking is we are using very low tech. I was going to ask you, what, what, what are you doing differently? I mean, technology, of course, has been a big enabler. No, uh, I want to understand how you are. Yes. Give me an example of how, how you are doing it. So, that's why. I, we are using a low technology. Mm. See, why I am mentioning this, there are certain, again, infrastructural problems with high technology. Like if I use an RFID tag. Yeah. In India, we are not having sufficient infrastructure to track it continuously. Mm. So we are do doing with uh, a very low technology. While in port, once it gives us, we put it on a train. Mm. And the train starts moving on the Indian railway network. Yeah. Indian Railways works on a, an absolute block system principle. That means between two stations, there is only one train. Second train cannot come into that. This is the basic working of Indian Railways. And there is a, a well-established software which is monitoring this that's called FOIS, Freight Operations Information System. It never fails. Okay. If it fails, Indian Railway stops. So now you can understand, Yeah. it will never fail. So we take data from FOIS, as long as container is on move, and it once comes to your, our depot, okay. then we keep tracking it with radio data terminals, no RFID. Okay. So we continuously keep on updating our system. So our ERP system is updated 24 by 7 on real-time basis. You can ask me what is the interval of updation. Interval of updation may be 15 minutes to 30 okay. minutes. In cargo, 30 minutes interval is, is like 24 by 7. More than that, it is not required. So this is a fail-proof system. And our customers are happy. We, earlier, maybe five years back, a customer coming to an ICD like Tuklakabad, Asia's biggest ICD, what we are running in Delhi. Yeah. There will be 10,000 TUs. Hmm. He will be last in a jungle to identify his container. Today he can go right to the spot. Okay. Dot on the spot and can locate the container and take out the car. Here you're talking to me about creating efficiencies and also moving along with, uh, you know, the technologies available also innovating within a certain space. Uh, this is happening at a time when we're looking and uh, looking forward to a pickup in economic activity in this country over the next, let me just say, five years as well. 
tell me a little bit more about your thoughts on that because uh, you've talked about targets that you have, but in terms of how you're looking at you know, the way the comp the, you are going to be adapting to the needs on the ground as well as how we are projecting growth, what are your thoughts when it comes to that? So I'll just come back to yeah. the earlier one. Yeah. I was telling you about two principles. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So one is continuous cargo eligibility we are covering. Correct. The second is the transit guarantee. Mm. Transit guarantee today we are not able to provide because of the constraints. Yeah. With the DRC, this will go away. Now, the transit guarantee we can provide. So, what the road is having advantage today over railway. Hmm. The road says that, okay, we'll deliver you in 90 hours. So, they say we maintain the transit times. With the DRC, the transit times can be maintained. Yes. Now, come to this question. Yeah. How I will pick up my market share? Yep. How I will pick up the volumes? With the transit guarantee. Now, if I can fulfill these two cardinal principles, the large the heart and the body will be fully energetic, agile and sharp and can take leaps and bounces and can run on. Mm. So that's where we are going to improve our market share. So where we improve our market share? Mm. I'm not improving our market share by grabbing other operators working in this area. That anyhow, that will keep on. So mm. I will not lose my market share to other rail operators. But improving the market share overall to this sector from the road sector, that is the aim. That is the aim. So to bring in the cargoes from road down to rail. Mm. Now here, it again doesn't mean that we will be trying to hit onto the road. Yeah. No. We are trying to bring in the cooperative attitude, cooperation between the road and rail. Hmm. That's what actually multimodal is. So we always say conquer multimodal logistics professional. So where is that multimodal? Multimodal is this. So the road cargoes for short distance they move on road. Sure. 300, 400 kilometers. Come accumulate, aggregate them and then move on train for longer distance. This is going to happen once DSC comes in and once the transit guarantee comes into railway. I know many customers, they are very keen on transit guarantee. All this price, what we talk of thousand rupees we increase, so will it affect you? It never affects. It never affects. Because this thousand rupees is not pretty low to the cost of a product. Yeah. The logistics cost of a product is much more. Okay. A container originating in TKD or in hmm. Delhi, hmm. moving to Los Angeles, the total cost will be $4,000. Hmm. So $1,000 is only how much? $15. 1000 rupees is $15, sorry. 1000 rupees is $15. In $4,000, $15 is... In the, scheme of, in the grand scheme of things in proportion. Yes. Uh, a little bit about the MOU that you are signed with Bangalore Airport Terminal Services. Uh, just a little bit, I guess specifically what we want to know is that how do you feel uh, initiatives such as that are going to be shoring up revenues? I mean, in terms of how it's going to be working, I, I understand you're going to be providing group handling uh, for various airport-related services there. How, how does one look at this? Okay. What's really happening there? It's, it's not going to be a very major revenue source, but yeah. it's, it's, it's more of, you know, trying to bring in the, the air logistics into our kitty. So ecosystem sort of thing. Yes. It's not a major source of revenue for us as compared to the other things what we are doing. Sure. But because we enter the air logistics with the Bombay airport handling the cargo terminal for three years, mm. this year we have left it. So we got the experience now. Yeah. And there also people start believing in Concourse's ability of providing good service. Sure. So now we want to start adapting into the air cargo logistics. So that's the idea. And not only cargo handling, even the ground handling. See, there, there, there's, uh, I think this, maybe I will just uh, explain a little yes. bit. Cargo handling is on the city side. Ground handling is on the tarmac. So we never enter ground handling. So with this MOU, we want to enter into the ground handling, the handling aircraft, tarmac handling. So, uh, just uh, a little bit in terms of, I think you were making this point a little bit earlier. This whole, there's a lot of noise and news around uh, uh, the uh, allowable axle load around trucks. I mean, we were talking about all of this. I'd like you to expand further on that because uh, we're talking about, you know, the needing of it to spare capacity, 
competition, so to speak, to platforms such as yours. How are you looking at this overall sort of policy as well as the kind of flurry it creates? So here, <laughs> I, I, see, the, the thing is that I think uh, I'm allowed to say this. This increasing the axial load is sort of legalizing the overload going on in the roads. It's already going on like that. Yeah. So I hope there is no further illegal overloading goes on o over and above the permissible axial loads now. Now, allowing these permissible axial loads, we are not really worried about that. Because, as I told you, my main aim is that how to get the transit guarantee mm. or some transit assurance to start with. Guarantee is one which, you know, things have to move in, in a very, very perfect, systematic manner. Maybe even transit assurance we can give. Then also the customer will be happy. Today we are not able to say anything. We, we work on probability theory. What we say is 80% of your cargo moves in this time. So I think your cargo will move. So if the question is that, will it be in 80%, then we'll say ki thoda ram bharosa hai. Baaki 20% mein gaya to hum kuch nahi bol sakte. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. So now with the transit assurance, if we can bring in, a road will join us. Road will join us, definitely. There are many issues with the road large quantities moving by road is very difficult. Mm. So that is not really worrying us. What I want to ask you, and, and it fascinates me as someone who's looking at uh, this, this entire corporation as you have it, um, and of course what's happening when it comes to talent, perception about PSUs, as well as competition from the private sector. Tell me a little bit, because you are being recognized as, as, as a company that's doing things differently, uh, both on the talent side of things, as well as competition, and and you are a government uh, force. So how do you, how do we, what happens there? See, first I talk about the talent. Yeah. Because the employee strength is the the core strength of any company. Yeah. A satisfied employee is more than uh, the any service or any other efficient system we bring into the company. Our attrition rate is the lowest. Maybe I don't lose more than 10, 12 employees in a year, maximum, and that too for a career progression. So when an employee is leaving you for career progression, he's always indebted to you. So he will be talking good about you, he yes. will be supporting and whenever it is required for you. Second thing about the service levels, we are bringing in a lot of innovation in service levels, as I mentioned, yes. continuous cargo visibility and all those things. We developed, we launched our app mobile app. So it is the, 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 the age of mobile. So we brought everything onto mobile. Now this app we are developing into a logistics platform. So my customer need not walk into my office. He can just put his request on the mobile. We will carry out the things. This is what we are developing. We will be launching that very soon. To improve our service levels, what we are doing, being a government, we are governed by the CVC and all other CAG, so many, it's called three C's. Mm. And we follow the L1 quotations for all the outsourced work. We are a very lean organization. Our turnover is 6,150 crores last year and my staff strength is 1474. Maybe one of the very high turnover per employee company. We want to keep it like that. Mm. So we do a lot of outsourcing. So we are constrained by the government ma model of L1, picking up L1. So if that vendor is good, I am good. If he is bad, I am bad. So to overcome this difficulty, what we are doing is we are going into multi-vendor system. Okay. Now technology is available. Here I am using the technology. The reverse auction, which is now accepted by the government, I am using that. Once I launch the logistics platform, I put in multiple vendors for each and every activity. So it will be a continuous reverse auction process on the logistics platform. Once my customer puts a request, it will be propagated to all my vendors. And vendors give the quote, there will be reverse auction, vendor will be picked. Okay. There will be service quality monitoring there. And we are ramping up our software systems for that, our hardware for that. We will be ready with this maybe in a year's time. Okay. We brought in one of the best, another PSU for a consultancy and then we are going in full hog on this. 
So we are entering into a new business here, distribution logistics. Yeah. This is 3PL in industrial products. Today it is uh, completely untouched in India except some sporadic, some people are doing it. On an organized level across India, nobody is doing it. So we are now present at 79 locations. We are going to target 100 by 2020. That means 100 locations we will have our ICDs, MMLCs. And in addition to this, 20 distribution logistics centers we are going to start in next three years. Now here comes how I bring in talent. These 20 distribution logistics centers I am going to start in a participative mode. Okay. Public-private partnership. I will bring in partners in business. So to my employee strength and talent strength, I will add on this partner's talent. See, when I outsource the contractor or anybody who is doing the outsourcing job, if he is only interested in doing the job and getting his profit, the commitment levels will be less. Here we will partner him into our business growth of distribution logistics. When growth is required to earn profits, his commitment levels will go up. So there is an extra talent adding to our talent. That's how we will withstand the private competition. Let me ask you as we, as we close this interaction. Um, you have uh, uh, cash on your books. And uh, the question is, uh, would you have any sort of plans to reward shareholders again through bonus? So, but what are your plans when it comes to that? Yeah, I'm a listed company. Yeah. So I can't share my future with you. Maybe I can talk yeah. about my past with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before I talk future, yeah. I have to talk to to first talk my past. stock exchange. Yeah. yeah, So my past is, we gave a bonus four years back. Mm. We gave a bonus one year back. Mm -hmm. And this year we split the share. Mm. So we are making it more and more investor friendly. So to make it aware, affordable to many more people. So that has given results. Our, we used to have shareholders of around 10,000 investors. Today we are having almost close to 50,000 investors with these initiatives. So with this past record of rewarding shareholders, we maintained our share uh, dividend at the same level even after giving bonus last year. Whatever we gave per share dividend, same we have given this year also on the expanded equity. So our endeavor is always to you know, give more to the investors. We are, we are considered to be one of the investor friendly PSOs. Yes, you are. Yes. So I hope we will try to maintain that track record. So definitely I can't talk about future because I, I'm, I'm bound by certain rules not to talk about it. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure speaking to you Thank right you here. Thank you for this interaction on Business Television yeah. India. Thank you.